The story of Motley Crue is obviously a very wild one, having been recalled by the band themselves in the fantastic autobiography The Dirt, uh, and of course the subsequent film that was released in 2019, nearly two decades after the book came out, and through just about every rock and metal news site out there. However, there is one story that often gets overlooked with minimal attention by the band themselves over the years, and that is the bizarre tale of a guy named Matthew Tripp, who claimed to be Nikki Six in Motley Crue through a period of time throughout the 80s. So today, we're going to take a look at this guy's history, his insanely strange claims, the lawsuits that stemmed from his stories, and the impact that he left preceding his death in 2014. The whole saga begins in 1988 when the acclaimed metal news outlet Kerrang! Magazine published a piece in their March 1988 issue entitled Trip or Treat, which detailed Matthew Tripp's wild claim that he had replaced the original Nikki Six in the early 80s when he was in a car accident and then subsequently strung out on heroin, uh, even going so far as to credit himself with writing some of the band's biggest hits, including Looks That Kill, Wild Side, and Girls, Girls, Girls. And look, as a sort of disclaimer here, everything that we're going to discuss has been told by Matthew himself, but of course, most of his claims are meritless, and he's no longer here to provide any further proof, so take all of this information with a massive grain of salt, uh, as a vast majority of his claims are just most likely not true. Matthew Tripp's story begins in 1982, when he boarded a Greyhound bus at the age of 19 from his hometown in Erie, Pennsylvania, to make the long trek to Los Angeles to fulfill his dream of becoming a rock star. Upon his arrival to LA, though, he struggled to find any luck with his music until early 1983 when he ran into a guitar player at the legendary Troubadour. That guitar player? Mick Mars. Already, though, Tripp's story doesn't make much sense chronologically speaking, as Nikki's accident wasn't until June of 1983, and he's saying that Mick approached him in 83, so already his timeline is a ways off, but let's keep trucking here. Nikki's car accident was pretty severe, uh, with him wrecking his shoulder so bad that he would need surgery and it would leave him unable to play the bass, and the accident would prompt Mick to approach him about replacing him, uh, I guess due to similar appearances in physiques uh, and the band were in danger of being dropped by their label, Electra Records, if they had to halt their momentum due to the real Nikki's accident. Uh, and of course, Tripp said yes. At that point, Mick took Tripp to meet the band's co-managers at the time, uh, Doc McGee, who famously manages Kiss to this day, and Doug Thaler. Supposedly, they handed him a bass and they offered him a contract. According to Tripp in a 2012 podcast interview, he recalled, quote, They said, we're going to take a chance on you. I was in front of contracts and crap like that was thrown down. I didn't have time to read it. I went to sign my name. They said, no, we're going to give you a stage name. You're now Nikki Six, and you just sign it here. There's no need to read it. This was just months before Motley released their highly regarded Shout at the Devil record, and according to Tripp, he had a hand in writing some key tracks from the record, including Looks to Kill and Knock Em Dead Kid. But in my head, his timeline is way off, because Shout was released in September of 83, and if he didn't join the band until the summer of that year... That would have to be a pretty damn quick turnaround time to join the band and write some of the songs all in a month or so's time to have the record turned in in time for the September release. I digress, though. By this time, the real Nikki's heroin issue was out of control, which supposedly caused management to separate him from the rest of the band and enlisting Trip to play with the band while they toured with Kiss and Ozzy. It wasn't until April of 1984 that Tripp would supposedly get the word from management that the real Nikki would be returning, but Doc McGee, I guess, told Tripp to continue writing songs, some of which, according to Tripp, ended up appearing on 1985's Theater of Pain and Girls, Girls, Girls in 1987. This is where things really start to go off the rails, though, with a few key things to point out. For one, there's no photo or video proof of anyone other than the real Nikki Six 
being on stage with the band at any point in time. Yes, we are talking the early 80s, uh, where there was certainly less video footage of things and hardly any fan film footage like there is today, but photographers were obviously around, and if Trip was really in the band, there would have to be some proof somewhere, be it video or photographic evidence. There is some speculation out there, though, on whether or not the proof does in fact exist, uh, as people have compared topless photos of Nikki in various periods throughout the 80s, stating that in some photos he has an any belly button and an Audi on others. In my opinion, though, the biggest smoking gun that disproves Tripp's claims is that the Motley and Kiss tour happened before Nikki's accident, and of course the Ozzy tour was in 1984 and had been extremely well documented, uh, as we can all recall the story of snorting fire ants and Ozzy licking Nikki's piss off of the ground. Uh, and of course, there's no evidence from photos uh, or anything around that time to show that the real Nikki was not there. Completely baseless claim. Not to mention, this was also around the time that the real Nikki Six was in a relationship with Lita Ford. Uh, and of course, Tripp makes no reference to her either. Upon his supposed exit from the crew, uh, Tripp went to live with his mother, who by that time had relocated to Fort Myers, Florida. While he was down there, he met up with a few hitchhikers who ended up robbing a couple of mall magazine stands, and unbeknownst to him, or so he says, he ended up being the getaway driver. Eventually, Tripp went back to his hometown of Erie, PA, only to be arrested on charges of armed robbery and extradited back to Florida in August of 84, but was somehow released on bail. Fast forward to 1985, and a couple of months after Motley's third record, Theater of Pain, was released in June, and Tripp had to appear in court and ultimately received six months probation and ordered to serve a two-year stint in rehab. Upon his release from rehab in November of 1987, he right away reached out to Motley's management, and according to him, he was immediately hung up on. Just two months later, in January of 1988, Tripp filed a lawsuit against Doc McGee's management company, McGee Entertainment, citing civil theft and other relief of a number of crew songs. Shortly after the lawsuit, he went public with his story, took Kerrang! magazine in March, and in an interview with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette in that same year, he spoke of the story and how the band seemed to cover it up, saying, quote, It was like I was rubbed out. When I tried to form bands, I'd tell people I used to be Nikki Six, and they'd say, no way. I thought, how can Motley Crue make it seem like I don't exist? But unfortunately, they did a good job. The lawsuit would eventually be dismissed, but not until 1993, and only due to the statute of limitations. All court documents pertaining to this case were destroyed in 2005. In the Kerrang! article, there are some photos that you can see here on the screen that I will admit bear a very close resemblance to Tripp, uh, maybe even resembling him more than the real Nikki. In my opinion, I do believe that it is very possible and likely that he was somehow involved with the band, maybe not the members themselves, but clearly, as you can see by this photo up now, here he is dressed as Theater of Pain era Nikki with the band's tour manager at that time, Richard Fisher. Uh, so maybe he had a relationship with the crew. There is also a story that a buddy of Matthew Tripp stopped by while he was living in Erie post Motley and saw Doc McGee and someone else in the living room with Tripp uh, with Doc telling the visitor to leave right away and pretend that he never saw anything. If you ask me, there was some loose, indirect involvement with somebody related to the band, uh, as Tripp definitely had some inside knowledge, but I believe that to be about it. The only thing that is a bit strange to me is that long after his alleged time as Nikki Six, Tripp had a friend who claims that he saw the real names and social security numbers of everyone in Motley, and the social listed for Nikki was the same as Tripp's, and he supposedly had Tripp's personal social security card in his hand at the very same time. That is quite a story, but again, the source was close to Tripp and could uh, have likely gone along with the story as he stated that he isn't 100% sure if Tripp was telling any truths or not. The only other piece of quote-unquote evidence that holds any weight is that while Tripp was in rehab, 
He joined the Temple of Set, which is an offshoot of the Church of Satan, which was led by Michael Aquino. The organization had a fairly strict admittance process, but Aquino believed that Tripp was in fact Nikki Six at one point, uh, as Tripp had presented to him a Florida speeding ticket that was issued to Nikki Six in a Lamborghini owned by Mick Mars. Of course, there is no mention of Tripp uh, or this story in the movie or the book The Dirt, but the real Nikki Six did finally address this on his radio show Six Sense back in 2014, saying, quote, I didn't take it serious, but it actually started picking up steam. There were pictures in Kerrang! magazine of this guy and me, and they were actually the most ludicrous things I have ever seen. They compared our belly buttons. They were like, which belly button belonged to Nikki Six pre-1984? I mean, it was so stupid. And this guy had my tattoos, but he had got them on the wrong arm. They were backwards. He must have looked, I don't know how he did it. This is the most insane part. The guy actually filed a lawsuit against me. All he said he wanted was all of his songwriting royalties, which, you know, he basically just wanted my life and my financial life, and he wanted to be me. He didn't want to be in the band anymore. That got thrown out of court and everything, and we started doing the research on this guy, and he had been in a mental institution in Erie, Pennsylvania. At that time, I remember it freaking me out so much that I had a 357 and I used to go to the shooting range and I started carrying it in my car because I just had this weird feeling that this guy could just pop up at any moment. I didn't know if my life was in danger. There is also a Motley song called Say Yeah that appears on the Supersonic and Demonic Relics collection that is supposedly about Trip, uh, with lyrics such as, you may have been raised by the skin of your teeth but you got no originality. And if you don't sue us, what's your use? Everyone else has. Tripp would go on to be in a number of other bands after his alleged stint with the crew as Nikki Six, uh, but of course, none of them ever went anywhere. Matthew Tripp ended up passing away in December of 2014 due to his decades long alcoholism. There is so much more about this guy though that we could talk about, but we'd be here for hours. Uh, but if you scour the internet hard enough, you can find it. The only other thing I do wanna mention is that I did come across multiple comments of people who supposedly knew him, uh, and I do believe them as they recalled specific facts on multiple different platforms, such as the type of car that he drove, and they can all sum him up by saying that while he was a nice enough guy, he was definitely a ways out there. His final remarks about his alleged time as Nikki Six were, quote, I'm not really going to take credit for anything because everybody thinks I'm a fraud. All right, though, I got to run because as Matthew Tripp wanted to swap DNA with Nikki Six, my fiance is waiting for me to give her some of my DNA, so I got to go. But thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you next time.